so I bought a Mac Studio in October, I think it was, the base unit I bought. So just the 24 core standard out of the box. And I had that for a week or two and I returned it. Because I was like, oh, I had this feeling that the M2 Mac Mini, the M2 Pro was supposed to be coming out. Rumor was it was supposed to come out in October, November. And by November, it didn't come out. So I was like, uh, I need a replacement computer. So I went back and I bought the Mac Studio again. But I bought the Mac Studio with a 32 core GPU and a terabyte hard drive. So uh, the question then is, uh, should I have waited two more months? And uh, if you're looking at a new Mac computer and you're considering the Mac Studio, especially you know the base or the 32 core, not going crazy, uh, should you buy the Studio now or should you just buy the M2 Pro Mac Mini? Hmm. So yesterday we put up a video that was the uh, M1 MacBook Pro up against the M2 Pro Mac Mini, just to see if you have on that side of it and you're like, you know what, <clears throat> I have an old M1, should I possibly, is it worth the upgrade? Um, so make sure you head over and see that video after you watch this one, if that's something you're curious about. Uh, we have the same kind of uh, tests that we ran on these two. So again, the Mini M2 Pro versus the uh, M1 Mac Studio. This is the 32 core GPU with the terabyte hard drive. So first off, we'll start with Cinebench because that's that's where we uh, that's where we started yesterday. So the Mac Mini M2 Pro, right? Uh, single core score, it's faster and it's, it's to be expected because it's the M1 versus the M2. Now it's not as much, it's not as, it's not incrementally faster than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, you're looking at 1530 for the M1 Mac Studio single core, and you're looking at 1645 for the M2 Pro. Is it faster? Yeah. Is it hugely faster? No. Right? No. But, but, when you go the other route and you go to multi-core, uh, this is where you see the M1 Mac Studio become more dominant, I guess, faster. Uh, so you're looking at multi-core being 12304 for the M1 Mac Studio. Again, I'm running the 32 core version, but that's GPU based, right? Um, and uh, multi-core on the uh, M2 Pro, 11, 7, 10. So they're like ridiculously close to each other on both. You know, these two machines really are super, super close to each other in performance. You know, if you look at, even look at the, the graph here, right? Mini versus Studio in single, they're, like this and in multi they're like this so yeah it's it's really hard to 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 see of which one is is better uh, here, here's a here's a clue the uh, mac mini is based on what i bought thirteen hundred dollars cheaper hmm yeah okay next one so now we go to geekbench uh, Geekbench, you know, same kind of thing. It's it's very much, you're looking at the GPU and the CPU. Uh, M1 Mac Studio, 1787, very similar to the uh, MacBook Pro that we did yesterday. Single on the Mac Mini M2 Pro, 1950. So you're looking at about 180-ish difference, not much. Uh, but again, the, the M2 Pro is higher in single, but loses in multi. But they're both, they're so close, right? You're looking at, for CPU, uh, 12.583 for multi in the uh, Mac Studio, and you're looking at 12.177. So are you really gonna notice much of a difference in CPU performance between the two? No, not at all. Now, uh, OpenCL and Metal, we start to see a bit of difference because, uh, probably because maybe of the 32 core in the uh, M1 Max. Uh, OpenCL, 57.290 versus 4829. So that's actually a pretty good sized increase, right? 
uh, compute 7144 versus 4789. So in metal, if we can get some more stuff programmed in metal, I'll be super happy. So my, my M1 uh, Mac Studio is not be, does not become obsolete right away because that would make me sad. But <clears throat> they're both still both really fast. The studio still is a, is still a performer without question. Uh, excited to see when uh, an M2 Max Studio, M2 Max Studio comes out. Yeah, that'll be that'll be nice. All right, next Insta360. So uh, I shoot a ton of stuff with Insta360, especially when I go on holidays, uh, especially in the spring, summer, fall months when I get to be outside riding a motorcycle. That's the camera that I use. So I am constantly having to export and do everything through Insta360 Studio. Um, so I could literally be uh, rendering out and exporting like <clears throat> one, two hours worth of footage. So uh, speed on this is important. They are close, but, but the Mini was faster. Not by much, but faster. So the M1 Max Studio doing a 30 minute uh, clip, actually it was three 10 minute clips, um, did it in one hour and seven minutes. And the M2 Pro, the Mac Mini, one hour, five minutes. So it beat it by two minutes, two minutes. And, and because it was three clips, you could see, because in Insta360 Studio, studio, it has a percentage, right? It's like how many percent is done, it's out of the complete. And once it finishes the first one, it was about 1% faster than the studio. And then after the second one finished, it was 2% faster. And then by the third one, it was 3% faster. So it was, yeah, it's it's quicker. I don't know why it's quicker, but it is. And it's, ah, I think it may be like one of the only ones that it actually was faster at. But again, very, very close to each other. Uh, Catalyst Browse. So for those of us that run Sony cameras, I actually have three Sony cameras. They're all like a uh, consumer-based camera. I have the... A ZV-E10 up here, I have a ZV-1, and I have a ZV-1F. Now, the ZV-1F does not use uh, Catalyst Browse, but the other two do, and I do use those cameras a lot for this and for uh, top camera stuff and for vlogging. So I took a five-minute clip. I just walked around the house kind of being all shaky so that the software had something to stabilize. And, <clears throat> again, ridiculously close to each other. It's like they were like right on top of each other. The M1, the studio did the five minute clip in 22 minutes and 36 seconds. And the M2 Pro Mac mini did it in 22 minutes and 40 seconds. So in 22 and a half minutes, there was only a four second difference. Yeah, studio is faster, but is it $1,300 faster? Right, and up to, up to this point, up to here, up to right now, 100% without question, I would have been like, Oh, I am horribly sad that I bought the studio because there's nothing so far that warrants really the fact for me that I spent so much more money on the studio in, in regards to speed. Like they've been so tight to each other. And like we saw with Insta360, it was actually even faster. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, Blackmagic Disk Speed. Now, this one is definitely... and. It's kind of hard to really put these two in a battle side by side because of the fact that on my studio, I have upgraded the internal drive to the terabyte. So I believe I did get a faster drive. Uh, but I think this is also something that you may want to look at with the uh, M1, sorry, the M2 Mac Mini, the M2 Pro, because I believe when you go to the terabyte hard drive, you get a faster drive. So right now, uh, the Mac Mini M2 Pro, you're looking at 3,200 megabytes um, for write, uh, 29.89. So let's just say 3,000 megabytes for read. Whereas the studio with the terabyte hard drive in it, uh, 5,600 and basically 5,500. So you know you're looking at om almost twice twice the speed, and I think in a lot of programs, especially, especially with video, that you're doing a lot of rendering and you're doing a lot of writing and you're doing a lot of this kind of stuff, um, that hard drive speed is going to be a really, really important part of it because two things, if you do run out of RAM, 
and you have to start using the internal drive as swap memory, then it's a faster, it's faster drive. So it's just, it just speeds up the process a lot, which is something that I think was happening in the next set of tests in Final Cut. Um, and of course, just writing in general, when it's writing files, it's going to be so much faster on the, on the studio or possibly just the, uh, M2 pro if you get the, the larger drive in it. So just, I, I would, the terabyte one, I think is, I think is the way to go. Uh, so final cut pro, <clears throat> we imported a couple pieces of footage. So first off we imported, uh, just some iPhone footage. We also imported some, uh, Sony, the Sony footage that we did before. And, uh, Really, you know, we are seeing the uh, studio faster. Again, I think that's because of hard drive. So you're looking at iPhone footage coming in at two minutes and four seconds uh, to import versus two minutes and 33 seconds on the M2 Pro. Uh, same thing as we imported some Insta360 footage. Uh, this came in at 246 versus 333. Now, it wasn't just a straight import. I did an import and a transcode to ProRes. So it import the footage and then transcode it into ProRes so that I can work easier with during the editing phase. So we are gaining definitely some speed. Uh, again, the larger files you have. And I think if you are someone that is working with, you know, 5K, 6K, 8K, 12K uh, footage, then the studio is probably going to be maybe a, a better uh, beast for you. For one, you can get more memory in them Two, you can get a way more powerful configuration if you need to. But again, for, for the fact that this is $1,300 Canadian cheaper, we're, we're doing all right, right? And most of us really are just going to be working with 4K footage. So the, the M2 Pro is doing, doing fantastic. Um, the last one there was export. And this is, this is kind of where I think <clears throat> the Mac Mini uh, had a bit of a... I want to say issue because uh, the file size was so large. We were, we were exporting a 22 minute file 4K with mixed footage. Uh, and I think because we were probably having to start using swap, like swap memory, uh, it slowed the process down. So the Mac Studio exported in just under 11 minutes, so 1056, whereas the M2 Pro Mac Mini exported in just over 19 minutes. So again, really good. It was still faster than my MacBook, my M1. So uh, I do think it has to do a lot in this aspect. I think it has to do a lot with hard drive speed. So I think the Mac Mini M2 Pro, if you were to get the faster hard drive, like that one terabyte hard drive in there, where it's going to be the same kind of speed of drive as the studio has in it, you would probably see that number come up a lot, maybe not come up all the way to the 11 minute mark, but probably closer to like 13 or 14 minutes. That that would kind of be my guess. They are close. They are ridiculously close to each other. You know, if you're looking at a Mac Studio right now, especially a base, if you're looking at a high-end one, right, where you're looking at maxing out the GPUs and maxing out the RAM and all that kind of stuff, then there's reason for that. If you're someone that is uh, run in Photoshop and Final Cut and they have color correcting going on and they got their email open and they're browsing and they got like nine different pieces of software opening. Having the avail availability and being able to customize a machine to get all that kind of RAM in the studio right now, definitely worth it. But if you're someone that, you know, like for me, when I edit, really I have Final Cut and maybe Mail open. That's kind of it. That's what I use. So uh, RAM can be a bit of an issue with the 16 gigs. I've been working with a MacBook Pro 16 gigs for two years now. Fine. Uh, there are times that, you know, we, we get into to swap for sure. But, you know, I, if I were to go out, I think if I were to go out and buy a machine right now, knowing what I know right now and having access to both these right now, I... I probably, honestly, I probably would still buy, or I would buy the Mac mini M2 Pro 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. You're kind of close to studio price. You're, you are, you're getting close to studio price. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, maybe I don't know. I don't know. That's a hard one. Um, the other real perk, of course, to the studio is you do get uh, some front-facing ports. So you get two USB-C ports and you get an SD card reader. No SD card reader at all on the Mac Mini, which I'm kind of sad. And I think they omitted it because I think if that was there. Uh, people would just, it sounds silly, but because of that SD card, that's a big push. That was a big, big thing for the studio. Um, so, you know, if you like the SD card, maybe maybe it's worth going to the studio. Not that you can't buy an SD card for 49 bucks or whatever. Uh, and last but not least, on positive for the Mac Mini, uh, HDMI 2.1. Yeah, I think the studio is just HDMI 2.0. So you'd have full access to 2.1, which is like 120 hertz and et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of nice. Leave comments down below, which, you know, if, if, if you have one of these two machines, uh, did you get the one that you want? If you're in the process of possibly buying one of these machines, uh, Mac Mini, M2, M2 Pro, or are you going to stick with the studio? Even now that you know that, uh, I would think now that the MacBook Pro line has been refreshed, the Mac Mini line has been refreshed, I would think maybe this summer, possibly summer, new Mac Studio with M2s. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you there. Leave comments down below. Love to, love to read your thoughts. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that little notification bell. And I'm out. Later.